Welcome to another video on my channel, this is Total War. A few days ago I stumbled upon Melkor's video about 6 things I wish I knew earlier in Total War Attila. This got me thinking about which are the things I personally wish I knew earlier in my early days with this game. So in this video, I'm going to share the things that came to mind. There is no particular order here, but the last one on this list I still see being debated to this day from time to time, so make sure you stick around to the end of the video. Starting off with the wonders that are present on the campaign map. As far as I can recall, these actually took me a pretty long time before I noticed that they actually provided some kind of bonus. I would say most of them, if any, doesn't really have an impact that will affect your campaign in any broader sense. But still, a bonus is a bonus, right? And a few of them can be pretty nice. For example, Mount Argaeus, which gives your armies plus 20% campaign line of sight and plus 5% to movement range with it, which is pretty nice. Mount Tamavan gives a public order boost of plus 2 faction wide, and an additional extra 5% range for archers. And Stonehenge is another good wonder that gives you a bit extra research rate for civic developments, nothing much, but still. But the big thing here is that it reduces the public order penalty due to other religions by 20%, which can be a pretty big problem in newly conquered territories with a different dominating religion. Next up is when facing the Huns for the first time. I learned the painful way that when you kill a Hunnic stack, a new one simply respawns the next turn. In one of my early campaigns playing the Visigoths, I had settled in the Burgala, after seizing most of Iberia, I started to push east, wanting to conquer the great city of Rome. But boy, I was in for a surprise in the north of Italy, and soon find myself being at war with the Huns. After a few initial victories, the Huns just kept showing up with renewed strength, all while I struggled to replenish the lines properly. I was struck by a sense of hopelessness. The border defense did not only bend, but all broke down and collapsed. I ended quitting that campaign. I later heard Legend of Toll War telling about the respawning of Hunnic sacks and that you want to keep them damaged. Lesson learned, I guess. Okay, let's move on to the next one, which is the impact of climate change as you progress in the campaign. For every chapter you complete, the fertility drops by minus one. So at the end of the campaign, it will be down by minus four making almost the entire map infertile, giving you no food output that is based on the local fertility level from your farms. Even on the first level of climate change, this has a pretty big impact and can get you to a state of famine if you don't watch yourselves. So this has to be taken into consideration when securing your food supply. This is why you should never ever bother with the wheat farms, as their output is mostly based on the local fertility level. That just make them a poor investment. This is another thing I had to learn the hard way. The fourth thing on this list is the buff archers and hurler gets on the barricades. It's not that I didn't even place any missile units on the barricades in the beginning, but I usually just pulled them away once the enemy units started to bring down the barricade, in order to save them. That way I didn't notice how at first how devastating this buff can be. If you are able to utilize this buff correctly, you can get as much as 2-3 to three times, maybe more kills compared to if you would have just had them firing from the walls. And when you have a tough defensive siege battle ahead of you, this can make all the difference. The fifth thing is the penalty debuffs you get on the battle map if your settlement is damaged. In the beginning, I didn't even take notice of the icon on the top of the screen where this is visible. But when I did, I realized why my units defended so poorly sometimes. I don't remember the exact numbers here, but the worse your settlement is damaged, the worse your unit stats become regarding their morale, melee attack and melee defense. So make sure to keep any frontier settlement in a good shape and watch out for the raider type of units is the lesson learned here I guess. But on the other hand this works both ways and can be used to your advantage when attacking. Just drop a few flaming shots and let it burn. Alright, so the final thing on this list is how you actually kill Attila and stop the endless hordes from spawning. As I said in the beginning, I still to this day bump into posts on this from time to time. How do you kill Attila? I've tried everything. I can completely relate to these posts because many of us have been there. Well, you need to kill him a total of three times. The first two times he becomes wounded, then you get a message saying something like, 
the next time will be his last. Only then will you have your golden opportunity to finally get rid of him. And just to clarify, it's not enough routing his army. In order to wound him, you need to kill the general as usual when you're facing him on the battlefield. I have actually never tried to assassinate him with my agents. I mean, why would I? The bastard should die on the battlefield. But from what I've heard, this do not work until the third and final time. So either you or the AI factions has to take him down on the battle map. And I would not rely on the latter. Most of you guys probably already knew about these things, but I'm curious. What is your number one thing that you wished you knew earlier in any Total War game? If you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like, a comment and subscribing to my channel for more Total War content. If you can get past 1000 subscribers, you should know that all revenue will go to my charity project This is Total War for Suicide Zero until the 10th of November 2023. Thanks so much for watching, see you in the next one.